<laughs> Hello, welcome to um, Awakening with Soul Inspirational, another edition of Soulful Sunday. This is part two. We are talking about empaths or empathy. So if you didn't already watch episode one, you can go to our website, soulspirational.com, click on the TV episodes tab, and look for part one. Otherwise, you can go to WCTV and look for Awakening with Soul Inspirational and find it there. Otherwise, we're going to jump right back in. Again, talking about empaths mm -hmm. and empathy. And who's next? Who wants to? Well, I'm I'm not an empath so much, but I I was always very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I guess a little bit, but I don't know. It brings my mother to mind because she was one of the, always doing something, and she always said, "I'm not nervous." Everybody could tell that she was, but she couldn't feel that. And I know oh. when she was like in her 70s, I tried to teach her how to belly breathe, like, mm -hmm. and she she couldn't do it. I don't know. She, I mean, depression. She grew up during the depression, and they were very poor. And she was the youngest, and she was always running around helping everybody. But um, I myself, as a child, was extremely shy. And I still am, but nothing like I was. And I was afraid of everything. So I don't know, afraid of everything. I mean... Was your mother fearful? No. Not that she knew of. But yeah, she was very... She had anxiety, and, and, and I think that ran in the family. Her mother was older, she was not well. Because as kids, as we were talking about earlier, they're sponges. So the when, from my own experience, when I would have an anxiety or a panic attack, and the kids were little, I could watch them. Um, there were times where they may want to comfort me, and then there were times where I would watch them kind of go into it. It, it was part of what got me on this path. I knew I needed to stop. Um, I didn't want my kids to take on this. So I'm just wondering if maybe that's for part of that, if you were absorbing the energy of your mother, um, or if you were feeling... Yeah, yeah. It, it very well could be, because she was... Her mother passed away, I think, when I was like... Well, I was three. So she was probably grieving, but she didn't really show it outwardly. And um, I think there was a lot of anxiety in that family anyway, so... I don't know. I've, I've been trying to figure myself out for a long time. <laughs> but coming here has helped a lot. And I wish, as a young mother, I would have known a lot that I could have taught my children. But they luckily take after their father, so they don't have my, <laughs> no, <laughs> my no. issues. So. And you, you are helping your grandchildren now. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's the beautiful thing. Even if we miss something as parents, the more that we stay consciously aware, the more that we stay open and we continue to learn and to heal and to grow, to evolve. Even if our kids are at the age where they may not want to listen, with the, the grandkids, we can still help to guide yeah. them. Yeah. I, I said something to Megan recently, I forget what it was I apologized, apologized her for. And, um, oh, Kiki was saying something and Megan kind of like blew her off about it. And then I stopped and I said, no, remember kids want to be seen and heard. And I said, I know what it was like to be really busy and not give you guys as much attention in hindsight that I wish I would have. And then I looked to Kiki and then, you know, I engaged with Kiki and I turned back to Megan and I said, I'm really sorry for that, but I'm, I'm conscious of that now and I'm, I'm here. So she can kind of hear as a mom to her kids, but in the meantime, as a grandparent, we can still yeah. instill that or recognize that empathy within our grand, our children or our grandchildren, even if the parents may be too busy or whatever in the moment, we get to step in. Yeah, that's, and, and I hate to keep talking about my childhood, but because I had a beautiful childhood, but I remember when I was four and I was dancing in front of the TV and we had my dad's friend over came over every week anyway. 
and I was chewed up for, you know, like making a scene. And it, it's just the culture, a farm family. And a generation. It was yeah, different. Kids were meant to be seen at. Yeah, her. And, and I remember my dad, like, if I'd say so anything in front of anyone, it's like, oh, Annie, don't say that, or, you know, yeah, <laughs> just not even anything really wrong. It's just embarrassing. He, he was embarrassed easily, he believes. So then it's like you're also, uh, just from my perspective, maybe also internalizing him, his embarrassment. Again, like the mom at the store who's yelling at the kid because she's embarrassed yeah. that the kid is making a scene, then she's like looking around, like trying to correct my kids, see, I, I raise good kids kind of thing. Right. So, you know, yeah. maybe as a kid, too, you're absorbing that embarrassment. And then, like, I don't want to be an embarrassment to dad. And then you feel bad. Judgment. And then, it's true. Yeah. yeah. And internalizing that. Wow. It isn't yours. <laughs> Get it out of there. It is something being an embarrassment. a very strong feeling. I Like, I'll be watching TV. I watch somebody embarrass themselves. I feel it. <laughs> I mean, there's times where I have to get up and leave the room. I can't. I'm like, oh, well, oh my God, they're doing that. Yeah. And they don't care. Yeah. They have, they don't care. I care though. I was just You're like, oh, I that. You know? Funny shows that have too much drama going on. It's even. Yeah. I, I have. I feel yeah. myself. I can't watch. I can't myself. watch. Got to change the channel. Off, off, yeah. Yeah. The little women of Atlanta. The, the the little people. They do stuff. <laughs> they're so drunk. So much drunk. I, I'm just so embarrassed for them. Mm -hmm. I, uh. I can't even watch it. They I didn't even fight. know there was such a show. Yeah, they fist fight and all kinds of oh stuff. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you laugh at it, that's what you do. Any kind of embarrassment. You, when you don't know what else to do, you laugh. And it'll separate you from feeling any of that. Why are you... It's not that I do that too. Why are you feeling what someone on TV is... Oh, no, I don't, and I'm not being mean I don't about get that. embarrassed myself. Right. I do some stuff. Stupid stuff that yeah. doesn't bother me, but when other people do it, I'm like, oh, well. yeah, I know. <laughs> because they're not accepting the embarrassment or what they're doing, so you're doing it, you're metabolizing doing your energy for, for them. <laughs> yes. Wow. So, um, and the reason why I say that is just like with abuse, we can, again, I can speak for myself. There have been times where I have empathized with my abusers, you know, trying to put myself in their position to like to, I think to try and make sense of why things even happened to begin with um, and then it took me a long time to go back and look and it's like I was like I'm feeling the guilt I, I was feeling the guilt and the shame that my abuser never felt and it's like I'm metabolizing the energy for them it's like stop it mm -hmm. there's nothing for me to feel guilty or shameful of I didn't do this so, so that's why I reacted that way, because, yeah, I mean, it's like metabolizing other people's energy. Matthew, you haven't spoken yet. It's so unlike you. <laughs> <laughs> pretzels? Or some pretzels, is what I was thinking. Just listening to what all you lovely people have to say. Do you have anything you'd like to... Uh, not right now. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. We won't say that and always try to feel into your energy at that. Yeah, get out of my energy. <laughs> hmm. Um, so? Um, well, I know that I've noticed with my little ones, um, I definitely, my older one, she's very empathic. Um, she, I can see her energy shift when we're, like, in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And, um... I remember, this is kind of sad, but it, 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 it was the first thing that made me realize. So she was like maybe one and a half, maybe two. She spoke very early. And so she's sitting in the cart, I'm going in the cart, and she always said hello to everybody, okay? Well, this one time, she was trying to get this person's attention, and they looked right at her, and then they just walked away. And I could feel her inside just, just drop, like, why didn't they say hi to me? You know, like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, okay, she, you know. Recognizing it. Yeah. But, yeah. But, um, yeah, she picks up on everything. I mean, every little 
Elena, the one who was here. Oh yeah, no, some of the things that you've already shared, yeah. You know why people do that? Let me tell you something. You know why people do that to little kids when they're going, hi, hi, they just can't say hi, they have to be mean, right? So, or they ignore them or whatever. They do that because inside of them, they are, they are hurting that child because that, they're gonna get back, at, you know, that's their way of getting back at the person that did that to them. They, have, they are projecting pain. Mm -hmm. That's what they are doing. And that's a rotten thing for them to do. You tell your kid that. You be very <laughs> honest and say, you know, there's just crappy people in this world. I yeah, told we've, you guys that when you were little. We've talked, you know, she's asked questions before, you know, like like when someone doesn't want to play with her, or when, you know, someone didn't do this or didn't do that, or, you know, I mean, we've talked about it. She's pretty, she's super accepting and forgiving of, like, everybody. So once something's explained to her, she she really just kind of understands and is like, okay, you know. But, um, Such yeah, I was a little fairy. She, she is. is. She just yeah. loves yeah. to dance around. She's so cute. Um, but that did, I think it upset me more than her when that happened. Yeah. Well, you have um, to take a middle road. She shouldn't be so understanding and accepting of everything like that. Because right. then you're going to have the problem on the other end. Right. You just... It makes oh, she's sense. she's got fire in the belly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It, it yeah. makes <laughs> sense to, to teach them both ways to, you know, you go through life, do whatever you want, but just don't hurt anyone along the way. Right. You know, that's it. That's life. Yeah. And, you know, every little thing like that hurts someone. They carry that. They hurt someone else. You know what I mean? It just it becomes a bad ripple of nonsense. Did, gee, she has to know both ways because she shouldn't put up with all that nonsense. You know, later. Right. You know. That's what I think. You, everybody has a right to their place in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that that's, makes sense. Like with the root chakra, how you have the right to be here. Mm -hmm. That's it in a nutshell. You know. Said, just said. Yeah, what a rotten thing to tell oh, a kid. You know? I remember, I don't know if it was you, but Brandy told me when you were little, Daddy, that that woman didn't say hi to me. I said, Well, some people are just mean like that. <laughs> yeah, but let me speak for some of us that are also just so much in our heads that sometimes we are looking through everybody, mm -hmm. not to be rude. We're just up here yeah. and focusing because every once in a while I'll be like, Oh, I think I just missed something. So sometimes we just. Was, you know, people may not be ignoring them purposely to be mean or to be rude. It's just, yeah. you know, we just, we're so caught up here that we're missing, we are missing the moment because I think it's awesome when kids are like, hi, hi, or, you know, they're in the car waving at you. Mm -hmm. It just brightens your day. So in those moments, um, yeah, it's like, oh, did I just miss a moment? Because I was so up here focusing over there. I've had people think I was rude and they're not saying, but I don't hear. I can't, I can barely hear. Like people at work, at first they thought I was just rude. If I'm not looking at you knowing you're speaking and I'm really paying attention, I, people are yelling, hi, 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 good morning, and I'm just walking to the water cooler, you know. <laughs> it's true, I can talk to him. I can't hear. And I'm like, oh, he can't hear anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll take that into consideration now that we know that. I can heard. hear, <laughs> but like if there's a lot of noise going on, I can't hear it all. I can hear all the noise, but not individuals. So it's like part of the noise. Yeah. Yeah. Like a restaurant, I can't hear anybody. I just sit there and smile. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> it probably serves me well. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'll agree. That's <laughs> good for you. Matthew? Yes. Anything to add, Jack? You must oh. speak. Let's everybody go around and ask him a question. Good. Yes. Answer that. <laughs> Do you find yourself as being empathic? Oh, yes. Well, did you well, you know what, you're an actor, so I would think that's... I think it really, yeah, it really comes in handy in my profession, you know. It's, you know, the study of the way people behave, you know. What are they saying, but what are they really feeling on the inside? So that, yeah, I think it does make you a better, a better performer if you can identify 
with people, the characters that you're portraying in that in that respect. Yeah, because it comes across more authentically when you can feel that pain or the joy. Yeah, I mean, because you know you have your lines, the words that the character is saying, but what's the emotion behind the lines? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Do you find yourself taking on the roles you play in everyday life? I think a lot of actors are empathic in that way because, I mean, I think it depends how hard they, how hard a performer wants to push themselves when they're portraying a character. Because um, if you really go there, for lack of a better expression, if you're doing like a real serious drama and you really go to that state of mind that which your character is in, your body can't tell that it's just pretend. So right. after the play's over, Sometimes, you know, and I've been there, it takes me a while to get that person out of my body, you know. If you want to do that, let's call it, for lack of a better word, the method acting, so-called, you know, it takes a while because the body can't tell. And that's why, unfortunately, you see on these news programs, all these, you know, unfortunately, a lot of performers become addicted to, you know, drugs or alcohol. It's a way to cope. I mean, may he rest in peace. Look at Heath Ledger yeah, when he I was went just to that the same thing. really dark place to play the Joker. Yeah. It really got to him. It did. You know, That's sometimes it's hard to disengage because, like I said, the body doesn't know. Okay, pretending is over with. Back to your, back to your real life. And you know that is brilliant. Thank you for deciding to share with us. Sure. <laughs> because. <laughs> um, two things there. Yeah. First of all, like you just said, the body doesn't know. Yeah. So, one, when we look at it as, as empathy for the people that we're around, our body, we may consciously know that, you know, this isn't my stuff, like because I'm feeling your pain or your joy or whatever, but when it comes to that painfulness or, you know, the kid screaming, my body is reacting just the same. When somebody is sharing a heartfelt story with me, my body is reacting as though I'm experiencing that person's pain. So in those moments as empaths, it's one of the things to keep in mind. What are we doing to our own physical bodies that are reacting to that emotional pain? The joy, like, that's awesome. But um, two, because... Um, however, you, ju you just say that, like the body doesn't know, that's also where we can shift our energy. So some of you may have uh, been like in different Reiki shares, well, I'll ask somebody uh, to think about something that makes their heart spontaneously smile. Because in that moment that I'm with them, I can, again, I'm in their energy, I'm specifically consciously in their energy and feeling that, that sorrow or feeling that pain and feeling like, you know what, I'm going to ask for them to shift this so they can change over the same thing the body also we can pick up on that joy we can choose to shift our own energy to shift out of whether it's ours or somebody else's pain that we have but you know what though absorbed i'm just thinking a thought just came to my head the world needs empaths because if the world didn't have empaths when somebody gives you a story where they're trying to get something off their chest and you're as cold as a stone how does that help them it don't help nobody no. This makes it worse. And you know what, I'm glad that you pointed that out because that's not what, yeah, I don't want people to walk away watching this thinking, no, I, I just... No, but you're right, yeah, you don't want to take yeah. on too much because it tears you up. But it's a good thing because, boy, what a world we'd be in. Yes. <laughs> yes. The more that people can relate to others, I, I think it's like anything else in life, it's balance. Mm -hmm. how, to, how to do things in a way... Like you said, you know, show them both sides, you know, this, you know, when we can just kind of balance things out and know that, you know, what I honor the, my empathy, mm -hmm. I honor who I am, but I'm also going to choose not to hold on to oh, yeah, these absolutely. feelings um, because they're, they are mine. Um, we need them. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. I think there's a brighter side to all that. Everything sounds so like, oh, you just want to push it away. You push away the negative, but... In order to manifest, I mean, that's what the actual secret is. Become what you want to be. You have to feel it. Mm -hmm. It's not about thought. You have to feel it, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, to get it. So 
if you're manifesting, but but you're not empathizing, you're not going to get what you want. Right, it's the difference between saying the words, because I can say whatever affirmation that I want to, or whatever I want to manifest all day long. Yeah. It's when we feel it, that's why they say visualize, because when you visualize, then you can feel the joy, or the happiness, or um, the excitement, whatever that may be, and, and whatever it is that um, you're manifesting, so your body feels what it's like to yeah. actually have this, whatever that is. Now, a psychological twist on that would be that you can do it without doing that. Book sense tells you, and I have done this. Yeah. You can repeat something to yourself, even not believing it, to your subconscious. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is good information. You can repeat it over and over again. You want something paid? Keep saying, it is paid. It is paid. Even if you don't believe it, you don't connect the feeling, nothing, your subconscious will believe that and it makes it happen for you. Even without the feeling, trust me, try it. There's a book, Joseph Murphy has it, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. And it's all how psychology works. I was going to say it reminds me of the psyche that we did out back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah it's a great book. And it's, it's a good read. And that book is from 1960 something, the original. And and you can do that. And you don't have to feel it. You know, that that's the difference between a psychology and spirituality. Um, well, it doesn't take longer. Does it take longer? I had a $500 bill I got. Let me tell you, it was 500 something bucks. And boy, was I mad. But right away, I just went to it is paid. It is paid. Every time, every single time it popped in my head, I don't care if I was driving, whatever, it is paid. It is paid, whether I believed it or not, because I had just read that book. And, and I just said it over and over again, and honest God, not even two weeks later, I went into one of those little internet cafes. Uh -huh. I played a 25 cent little thing. The third time I hit it, it hit for over 500 bucks. Mm. And I was like, oh, it's paid. <laughs> and, and you can get people that? to... You, you do that you, and sit and really, as soon as you're done reading the book, sit, sit by somebody and say, what do you smoke, drink, coffee, whatever. Picture them moving it over to you. Watch their hand come up and, and do it. Your subconscious mind is so powerful. Feeling is the quickest way to get there. Okay? And you, you only need a mustard seed of belief, really, you know. So you can feel it and it'll come quick. But if you say it without having to try to feel it, it'll happen. It doesn't take much longer. It, you, can, you can do all kinds of oh, I love it. You can do all kinds of stuff. It's all funny stuff. how you were saying about how, uh, you know, sitting next to somebody and just keep thinking about them moving their water bottle and they do. Here's a guy, I think it was the view, I'm not sure. Um, they had somebody on there and they were doing those kinds of things with the, the ladies on the panel. Yeah, Yuri Geller does that with spoons. Who? Yuri Geller, he, 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 he'll, uh, he'll have a spoon someone will be holding, uh -huh. and he'll bend it just by looking at it. Mm -hmm. And it's just his energy moving, and, and he's convinced his subcon he has convinced it that mm -hmm. he can do that. And if you take a pendulum, Okay, everybody, you, you know, it's all the energy, this, that, and the other Go in a store and watch one hanging in the case. Mm -hmm. And just start to picture it going in circles. And it will. Wow. It will. You can do anything. You, if, you, if you were holding a pendulum and reading for me, say, I'll move your pendulum. You're going to mess with my reading. Subconsciously, <laughs> subconsciously you would do it. It's, really? We're it's, hoping for a certain response. Mm -hmm. You're seeing a certain response. Oh, you know, you, and you, you, it's in that book, and there's nothing special about it. It's just every single time it pops in your head, you have to. So it's like you're overriding the, the negative thought with it's already done. It's, it's done. It's, it's, done. it's done. paid. Yeah. It's paid, and you don't worry about it. You, the, the only thing you cannot do is worry about it. Just yeah. don't. It's done. Leave it. No, because then we get more. You get more of the negative, it. right? Um. 
That's what the secret doesn't tell people. That yeah. remember the secret book? Yeah. Oh that? yeah. That's yeah. what they forgot to tell people. Oh, they they deliberately left a lot of stuff yes. out of that movie. Yes. Well, they got the secret. Yeah. 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 Well, we can't give it to everybody. It would just when we searching for it. I know, but that. the last six, seven years I've been beating my head against the wall. What's the secret? What? And, and I'll like tell you what. I read that book. It's, it's, I got it. You showed me it right. I have right after we met, and I read it, and it changed my life. Mm -hmm. In little ways, I haven't mm -hmm. been able to do the big, big thing yet. But well, no, but it brought you into like spirituality in a way, yes. didn't it? Yeah, yeah. did it for me too. A lot of people that's what it'll things. do. Yeah, it will. It gives right. you a different way of seeing things. The Murphy book is the best way. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. Don't buy nothing else. <laughs> so final note on empathy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I don't even know. So to recap, I think it's just about being aware if you are an empath, finding that that balance, um, honoring yourself is being an empath. The gifts um, that come along with it, um, but knowing that if if some of the things that were said during part one and this part two resonated with you, um, just know that you aren't alone. That there are a lot of empaths. In the world, um, and that you too can find balance if that's what you're seeking. So, thank you so much to everybody here for participating in this topic. I really, truly appreciate it in each and every one of you. Um, if you at home have any questions, please feel free to contact me at info at soulspirational.com or soulspirational.com for our website. So, until next time, thank you, be well, and namaste.